Today I have another Cubase Q&A video for you. Hey, what's going on? Chris here from Mixdown Online. If you're new here on the channel, feel free to subscribe to the channel to click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And for all of you, share and like if you think that the video is helpful. Okay, so now let's start this video with question number one that goes like this. What are the differences between inserting a plugin on a track and direct offline processing? These two things confuse me a little bit. Which one is better for making a song or mixing? All right, so let's check this out. We're gonna jump in Cubase and I'm gonna show you the difference between those two options that we have in Cubase when it comes to plugins. Okay, so first uh, you have to understand that when I'm using an insert, the insert will affect the entire channel. Okay, so uh, by using on for this example, I have a NEQ, a FabFilter Pro Q2 on the kick drum channel. So that EQ, whatever I do with the EQ, is going to affect that entire channel. Okay, so even if I have several separated events, uh, let's say I have like a bunch of events, audio events, with different gain, um, that EQ is going to affect everything on that channel. Now, the direct offline processing will only affect the audio event that you select. So if it's the entire event, it's gonna affect that entire event. If it's only one part of the audio event that you split it into its own event, this is what it's gonna focus on. So for example, if I just wanna add a bit of distortion on that part of uh, that audio event, the kick drum in this case, I'm gonna select it, click on F7, which will open the direct offline processing window. And from that point on, I can add the plugin directly into it. And this is gonna add, for example, I'm just gonna add my distortion plugin. And there you go, I can tweak that up and that will create a temp file within your session that you're not gonna see, um, and it's gonna apply the effect that you inserted um, directly on this portion of your uh, signal that is on that track, which is that specific audio event. You can add more than, uh, than one plugin if you want. You can add several plugins uh, and create a chain if you want to. That's not a problem at all. And But the point is that it is going to add that effect only to that selected audio event. Not on this one and not on the, the one that comes before, but only on the one that is selected. That can be practical in a situation where you just want to add, I don't know, like in this case, you want to add a bit of uh, distortion effects or, you know, a specific type of effect that you want to add on uh, one part of an audio event. You can use direct offline processing or you can use direct offline processing to process an entire track without having to insert a plugin uh, on the channel uh, just to commit to a specific sound. Um, that can be part of your recording phase or your ar arrangement phase. Um, that can also be very useful. And this is something that I'm going to do, you know, if I want to commit to a specific sound, a specific effect on a track, instead of adding that as an insert, I'm going to add it directly on the event itself uh, and use the direct offline processing option in Cubase. Uh, note that when you do so, uh, that effect is going to be part of your initial sound. It's going to be part of the recording. A bit like if you uh, um, you were recording with that effect. Okay, so it's kind of a, a way to commit to a specific sound. And that is going to come before, if we're talking about the uh, the chain order, it's going to come before it hits the inserts. Okay, so it's because it's going to be part of your sort of recording. So, um, and the cool thing is that you can go back, open that um, direct offline processing and tweak the effect around if you're not satisfied with the effect. So there's always a way to come back without committing 100% um, to it. Okay, so that's an advantage. Uh, but I only on my side, I'm going to use that. Um, I'm going to use the direct offline processing if I want to commit to a specific sound, um, like if I was recording that effect 
with my instrument, okay? So um, this is how I use it. Or, uh, apart from that, I'm gonna do everything as insert since I usually use an effect to affect the entire channel. So this is the difference between the two, I hope that is not too confusing. I hope that is a bit more clear for you. Now let's go to question number two. In Cubase Pro, is there a way to select the duration between any two markers without manually setting up the locators? Okay, yes, there is. Let's create um, a marker track. All right, it's right here. I'm gonna bring that on top. Okay, I'm just gonna insert a couple of markers. Okay, so let's say I have those markers and uh, you want to select um, the distance between those two markers, number one and number two, and set up your left and right locators. Basically, what you need to do, you just select both of them and click on P, and that will bring the locators, the left and right locators, directly uh, between those two locators. Very simple. The P shortcut is going to be your friend uh, when it comes to the left and right locators. If you want to set up your locators manually, you can do so uh, by just dragging them up and down. That is also an option that you you probably know for sure. Uh, and you can also uh, use your uh, your pen. If you bring your cursor to the top here, uh, what you can do by clicking on Control, that will set up the right locator, and the Alt is gonna set up, by clicking on Alt and clicking, that will set up the left locator. Okay, so that's another way to do so. You can also select an audio event, click on P, and that will bring the locators um, to the size of that specific event. Okay, so very simple if you want to select, you know, you want to just bring your, uh, your locators from the top of the song to the end of the song, select all, click on P, and there you go, and just extend that end just a bit so you have a bit of detail. And uh, this is a very fast way to select the entire song. And you can also use your uh, range selection tool and just select anywhere you want to have your left and right locator. And there you go, you click on P once you have that uh, range selected. And also a very cool tip that you need to know, also if you wanna just loop one specific section of a song, uh, you can do so by again um, selecting that range selecting tool. You can make sure your snap is on if you want it to, uh, to be snapped to the grid. Select that and then click on Alt P and that will loop it automatically and it's gonna start playing that selection right away. Okay, the minute you do so. So let's do this again. And I'm gonna select this, click on Alt and P. Okay, so this is by itself gonna start playing that selection, that uh, that range, and it's gonna activate the cycle at the same time. Okay, so th those are the different ways you can use your, uh, you, you can set up your left and right locators. So I hope that is helpful. Now let's go to question number three. Hey Chris, I got a question. Why some of the plugins have three lines next to them and others don't? What do the three lines mean? All right, so let's open Cubase again. Uh, look at the plugin list. So what he means is when you insert a plugin, uh, let's uh, click, I don't know, let's go to Steinberg. Look at the plugins, there you go. So we have three lines here, okay? So some of the plugins will have three lines. I'm gonna go to my collection, and there you go. So I have this one that has three lines, but uh, some others will not have three lines. So what the three lines mean is simply that the plugins are VST3 plugins, and the others are probably VST2 plugins. So that's the only thing that that means. So it basically shows you what plugins are VST3 plugins. That's it. Let's jump to question number four. I can get the transport bar to remain open when I open any uh, of the editors, keys, drums, and so on. I know I can hit F2 and open close it, but is there a way to keep it visible all the time? Thanks, Chris. So if you click on F2, you will have your floating transport, which I never use. Um, what I do is I make sure I have my transport at the bottom of my project window. If you don't see it, very simple, go at the bottom, and at the bottom right, you have the setup transport option, and you're, go you're gonna see the transport controls, okay? So I'm just gonna go back and add that on again, and click on transport controls. And there you go. So this is always gonna stay on whatever window you open from the project window. So if you open the sample editor by double clicking on a Nadio event, that transport is always gonna stay 
at the bottom. You can also leave that static on the top of the window if you prefer and uh, remove the one at the bottom, okay? Or you can keep both. And on the top right, you'll have the same option, the setup toolbar for the top section of the project window. And again, you'll be able to add your transport at the top if you prefer that. I prefer to keep it at the bottom uh, for the um, the project window. So this is what I am going to do. And uh, if we look at the mix console, we can also have it on top. Okay, so mine is always on, but on top this time and not at the bottom because we can at the bottom. You click on the top right on setup toolbar and you make sure your transport is, uh, uh, is checked on. So there you go. I hope that was helpful. If so, share and like and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. All right, my friends, until next time, take care and see you.